Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Modding News. Today we're going to talk about another N64 HDMI mod, the Mr. Cade, as well as a modern DOS computer. First up, let's talk about Bordy's N64 Advance 2. He tweeted the other day about he's ordering some custom flex PCBs for his N64 Advance 2. Now, Bordy is known for creating a bunch of other mods already. He has an N64 RGB mod, a Super Nintendo RGB mod, but this new N64 Advance 2 is an HDMI mod. And we've seen this already in a different tweet. He has a picture here, and what's interesting interesting is it actually has a full-size HDMI port, which we haven't seen before. Now, there really isn't any news about feature parity compared to the Ultra HDMI or the N64 Digital, and you may be wondering to yourself, do we need a third HDMI mod for the N64? And the answer to that is yes. I think more options is better for everybody, especially since the Ultra HDMI and to some extent the N64 Digital have been hard to acquire, if not impossible for some people. Maybe this might even be open source, so people might be able to make their own. The more options, the better for people to be able to get HDMI mods mods into their consoles. So I'm really excited to see where this goes. I can't wait to get my hands on one and maybe I'll do some comparisons with both the Ultra HDMI and the N64 Digital. Next up, let's talk about the Mr. Cade. Now, if you're watching this video, unfortunately you missed the latest batch that Mr. Add-ons released um, last week. Actually, I missed it too because I was sick that night. Not really that I want one. I don't have a, well, let's talk about what it is first. The Mr. Cade is a JAMA adapter for the DE10 Nano or the Mr. JAMA is the interface that some arcade PCBs use to be able to swap out different games in an arcade cabinet. And actually, if you've seen any of my Neo Geo videos, you know that the super gun here attaches on the JAMA edge down here. So the Mr. Cade is an adapter for the Mr. that kind of gives the Mr. one of these JAMA edges. Now the big appeal for Mr. Cade is that the Mr. already has a huge kind of catalog of arcade games. And I think that there's a bunch of arcade PCBs that have gone up in price. So if you're looking for a rare game, buying a Mr. and a Mr. Cade might actually be cheaper than buying one of those arcade PCBs. So this just gives arcade fans the ability to set up an arcade cabinet and then just be able to switch between whatever arcade games that they want without really much of a hassle. Now one of my long-term goals is actually to build an arcade cabinet and get a Mr. Cade into it so that way I don't have to worry about buying old PCBs, worrying about them not working right, or having to worry about old arcade hardware. So hopefully these come back in stock soon because I'd like to pick one up even if I can't use it right away. I think we should be supporting Mr. Add-ons with the work that he's been doing. The other day, Zwenergy, who is the creator of the GBA HD project, released a new firmware that has sort of an experimental feature that I've been wanting for a little while now. The Game Boy Advance consoleizer has a feature that can swap the palette from the default GBA palette, which is kind of really garish. I'll call that the original palette. And it gives it more of a subdued and nicer looking GBA palette. So the consoleizer has had that, but now the GBA HD has that feature as well. I went ahead and updated the firmware on my GBA HD and I took some screenshots, so let's take a look. So this is the original palette for the GBA HD. This is without any color modifications. And now this is with that GBA palette. This is a lot nicer to look at, especially if you're gonna be playing on a bright monitor. I have a pretty bright Dell monitor here and it always makes those harsh original colors look very extremely bright. And I. I really can't play Game Boy Advance consoleizer or any kind of games on this monitor. And I also did a comparison with the consoleizer colors. So here's the original for the consoleizer and then the GBA palette for the consoleizer as well. So as you can see, the difference between the stock consoleizer colors and this GBA palette makes a huge difference for usability. So it's awesome now that the GBA HD has a feature that I was missing from the consoleizer. And the GBA HD, after you get it all set up, actually is pretty easy to update the firmware. All you have to do is go to the GitHub and grab the new firmware file and then dump it onto the SD card that goes underneath the FPGA. So I'm really excited that Zwenergy and ManCloud have been trying to keep up with these feature requests and make the GBA HD a really awesome project. There's some more interesting PS1 Mr. news. This is the PS1 Mr. Core actually loading a CD image. Before they were having to load a PS1 game in an emulator and kind of capture its state and then put it into the Mr. that way to avoid having to load from the CD. But it looks like they're making progress being able to load from a CD image directly. So this is another huge step for this PS1 Mr. Core. I'm super excited for this thing. And it's just gonna make the Mr. Project even better than it already is. Imagine playing PS1 games in a Mr. Cade. And last, I wanna talk about the Wii C. If you watched LGR's video at all today, it's an absolute banger. Go ahead and watch this video. The Wii C is a modern DOS computer. It's not a emulator or anything. It actually uses kind of a system on a chip, well, system on a module, they call it, a development platform that's meant for industrial platforms that need to use older computer hardware, things like Windows 98 and DOS, but basically using all modern components. The developer's name is Rasteri, and he actually has this project page 
page where you can, if you wanted to, order and build one yourself. So I love me projects like that. So I might try to look into making one of these, although it's pretty expensive. I think LGR said all the parts are like $350, but it's supposed to have good compatibility with a, a wide variety of games from this is Tomb Raider here and uh, Need for Speed 2. Now it doesn't support any 3D graphics accelerators. It just uses 2D graphics or software rendering, which is a little bit disappointing, but I mean, come on, we're kind of grossly misusing that industrial CPU or that industrial system. But it sounds like it does support some Sound Blaster audio. Now I'm not really a big DOS gamer or anything, but I've been on a big LGR kick lately and I've been watching some of his old DOS computer builds and it's got me thinking about trying to build a retro PC, but something like this would be awesome, especially since that system on a module, you can actually really down clock the processor in there. So it goes anywhere from a really low megahertz to up to one gigahertz. So it's kind of a flexible processor that you can use on a wide variety of games from different time periods. I'm not sure about the availability of all its parts, but I'm definitely going to try to put one of these things together someday. Let me know if you'd want one of these WeC computers or if you have any retro DOS gaming experience. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. That's all I've got for you this week. If you'd like to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.